Hello Edexcel students, our attention now turns to paper three, the one remaining big paper left in our trio. Paper one and paper two are done, hopefully they've gone really well, but regardless of how those papers have gone, paper three is a massive opportunity for you. It's normally a very high scoring paper, it's a way to maintain your high grade if that's where you are already, or a way to really push up that grade if the first two papers haven't quite gone to plan to secure a top grade in the end. A lot can change in paper three, a lot can happen in paper three. You've got to be preparing well and be confident to smash that paper. That's what this video is all about. I'm gonna be giving you my top advice of how to prepare well for paper three, a unique paper in some regards, but also I'll be walking through the entire paper, making sure you're happy with the structure, the time management, and how to answer all the questions within it. So make sure you watch everything in the video so that at the end you feel great, ready to go, to prepare well and smash this final paper. Let's do it with key advice. First of all, pay no attention to any predictions. If there are predictions out there, just ignore them. Don't get into that psyche of worrying about predicting what might come up in paper three and what might not. Simply put, nobody knows. So if anyone is saying, here's my prediction, just ignore it, nobody knows. Anything can come up in paper three. But also, there is no need to worry about predictions because now you're gonna have extracts to guide you for all your questions. Those extracts are gonna be great. They should give you all the points that you need, literally everything that you need will be in the extracts, but also to help you further, you've done your paper one and paper two by now, you've got good micro and macro knowledge, you're ready for anything that can come up in paper three. It's not gonna be something outside of your course, it's all gonna be either micro or macro knowledge you already have, so don't worry about predictions whatsoever. Having said that though, what you can do is weigh up major topic areas that haven't been assessed as big essay questions in paper one and paper two. That's a smart way to weigh up certain topic areas, but regardless, content mastery is the most important thing for paper three. So your micro and macro notes you've already made for papers one and two, make sure that's still taken over, going through the content there, making sure you're a master. Bear in mind, it's been a while since paper two, it will be even longer by the time paper three comes along. So don't take any of that for granted. You still need to be a content master for paper three. Go over that, that's a very important thing to bear in mind. Of course you wanna be practicing questions, but I would prioritize the unique elements of paper three, which for you is that 25 marker, isn't it? The micro macro effects, 25 mark, you wanna make sure that you're very confident with how to write your 25 marker in that regard. Loads of help on the channel to guide you with that, a lot more to come as well. The way to do it is look at all the topic areas in the course that could be micro macro effect questions, and then list your micro macro effects for those topics, then you're good to go. Then you can essay plan for that 25 marker, very, very confident. I'm gonna guide you a lot more with the walkthrough on that 25 marker, so much help on the channel as well, but just make sure you're weighing that up. And then of course, you wanna be confident with the exam paper itself. You want to be ready for what's gonna be coming in front of you. The walkthrough coming right now is gonna be great in that regard, but also the videos in my edXL exam technique playlist. I break down the entire paper. I give you the technique, the structure for all the questions in the paper. Go and watch those videos for the highest level of detail. But now let's get into the walkthrough. Make sure you're okay with everything that's coming your way in paper three. Paper three is gonna be broken into two sections, section A and section B. Both sections are gonna have extracts at the start and then a load of questions that follow. The structure of the questions will be exactly the same in section A and section B. You're gonna have a five, eight, and a 12 market in both sections, exactly the same style as paper one and paper two. And then in both sections, you'll have two 25 markers. You pick one out of the two. So in section A, you'll have two 25 markers there, pick one out of the two. And in section B, you'll have two 25 markers, pick one out of the two. All questions in both sections, A and B, will be linked to the extracts. That's gonna be the structure for section A, section B. The order of the questions will follow the order of the extracts. So just like my recommendation in paper one and paper two, I recommend that you read the extracts when you need them to answer your questions. So as the questions come, you'll naturally be going through the extracts. So don't allocate time separate to answering questions just to read through all the extracts. 
simply read through them as you need them in that regard your reading time for the extracts is within the time of you answering the question like it was in paper one and paper two the five eight and the 12 marker in section a and section b will be exactly the same style as the five eight and the 12 you've already done in paper one and paper two literally the same so the same techniques the same way to use the extracts hopefully the extracts can drive the points that you need you can then add the economic theory to that in your answer you should be absolutely fine again it should be a market minute for these questions so five minutes for the five eight minutes for the eight 12 minutes for the 12. Um, just bear in mind in paper three you don't need micro and macro in these questions especially for the eight and the 12 they're proper essays you don't need to worry about having micro and macro elements so if you if you see the eight marker as being more of a micro question just answer it in a micro way with micro ideas micro points if you see the 12 marker, let's say, as a more macro question, just answer it macro. You don't need to mix and match in those essays. You just answer however you need to answer those questions. And then you finish each section with a 25 marker. You choose the best 25 marker from the two options you have in each section. Again, you're looking at 35 minutes for this 25. If you're really good with time management, five minutes for the five, eight minutes for the eight, 12 minutes for the 12, that's 25 minutes. That gives you 35 minutes then for your 25 marker. You wanna have that, that will be a good amount of time to write a great 25 marker. This 25 marker, it's similar to paper one and paper two, but with two unique elements. The first major unique element is now you have extracts to guide you. That's gonna be so helpful. Again, ideally, if the extracts are really good, the extracts can drive what you need to talk about in those essays, that's very unique. Second unique element, it's not just gonna be micro, it's not just gonna be macro, these 25 markers, they're gonna be micro and macro questions. That's very unique, you've gotta make sure you're planning accordingly. Now, first piece of advice to make sure that you do well on these 25 markers is in the exam itself, hunt down exactly what the question is asking you micro and macro of. So is it micro and macro effects that you need to be writing? Is it micro and macro causes or micro and macro influences or micro and macro factors or micro and macro reasons? What is it you need to be writing micro and macro of? Hunt that down and highlight it so that you're not going off tangent. If it's asking you for micro and macro causes, you're not then writing effects, which would be irrelevant for that essay. So once you hunt down what exactly the micro and macro is of, you can then answer accordingly. So if you know it's effects, micro effects, you might talk about changes in price, changes in quantity, changes in producer revenue, changes in surpluses, uh, market failure kind of issues, or whatever it is that you know is a micro effect, you go into that. If it's a macro effect, you know you should be talking about the macro objectives, changes to growth, unemployment, inflation, uh, maybe it's changes to the current account position or government finances, or inequalities, right? You know exactly then what you need to be talking about. But if it's something different, factors, reasons, causes, then you know you've got to be talking about other things. So that's key tip number one. And second of all, you need to be revising appropriately to smash this 25 marker, preparing well, so you can write this 25 marker really well. Now to do that, what you need to be doing is writing down all the topic areas that could be micro and macro topic areas. Write them all down to help you I have a video about all the topic areas that could be micro or macro. Go and check that out. And then for all those topic areas, you should be listing down your micro effects and then your macro effects or your micro causes, macro causes, etc. depending on what kind of micro and macro question that could be. It's all been guided nicely for you in that video. Go check it out and write down all those topic areas and then list your micro and macro effects or causes or factors or whatever it could be. That is unbelievably good revision advice because then your brain is gonna be ticking. You're gonna be comfortable talking about micro and macro. Even if you think a topic area is more micro, your brain's gonna be ticking over with my macro ideas. If you think a certain topic area is more macro, your brain's gonna be ticking over with micro ideas. You want that to be natural so that whatever the question is, on the exam day itself, you're able to do the same kind of technique, bring in micro and macro ideas very, very simply. In terms of the structure of that 25 marker, exactly the same structure that you followed when writing your 25 markers in paper one and paper two, absolutely. The only slight difference that I would say is that when you're writing your analysis paragraphs, make it explicit what you're trying to do. So maybe you can start by saying one micro effect is, or one macro effect is, be explicit like that, and then go off 
and continue writing as you're used to doing. Evaluation of these micro macro effects is just like normal. So if you're writing a micro effect, you don't need to evaluate with macro or something. Evaluate as normal in the usual way. It's your analysis paragraphs. They're going to be very distinctly either micro or macro. That's what you're looking to do. And that, guys, is all the advice that you need advice so that you can prepare perfectly for paper three. Bear in mind all the unique paper three exam technique videos that are already on the channel. Go and watch those as well as all of the incredible videos to help you with that 25 marker that I've already talked about. I've also gone through loads of different micro macro effects for a variety of micro macro topic areas. You have to check those out. There's going to be more coming from me in that regard as well. Check those videos out when they're released and just make sure you're preparing hard. No complacency for paper three, working hard. We want to end with a bang and smash that final exam so you're feeling great when results day comes, all right? Work hard, stay with me on social media, use everything that I'm giving you, use all the guidance and do great for paper three. I know you will. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in future videos.